um, I'd like to introduce Junichi Takino, President of the Heuristic Science Research Institute, Professor Emeritus at Meiji University. And uh, with that, Um, I'm Junichi Takeno from Japan. The uh, title is Self-Aware Robots and Conscience. In my presentation, I will explain what self-awareness is, how to build the self-awareness by new neural networks, two examples about self-aware robots, how to implement feelings, and pain, and finally, robot conscience. Okay. Uh, this is my subjective feeling that I'm in the city of Nimbo in China. And also, I'm very fine now. And many scientists said that this feeling came from my conscious state. I can find myself in a mirror. It is called the mirror test normally. Is this process an inner function on my own? The large number of neural connections between the brains, brain and organs Human behaviors are controlled by them. What are human thought and his her feelings? I would like to show you first the studies of Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo dissected a human brain. I don't have any evidence that Leonard found neural nets in the human brain. However, he found each eye connected to the brain by cables and the brain connected to many small muscles around, around its mouth. Nowadays, researchers and scientists can understand both. Leonardo's interest was how a, brain, how a human brain and nerves change feelings to a behavior. When he dissected a human brain, he wanted to know how to connect the relation between perceptions, feelings, and behaviors. Leonard found small empty room in the brain. But he didn't make a very precise explanation about the inner workings of the brain. However, he knew that the brain receives visual images from the eyes. And also, he imagined that facial expressions like smiles are controlled by muscles, which activate from the brain around the mouth. These 
descriptions by Leonard are accepted by almost all brain researchers nowadays. And uh, Leonard imagined that human feelings exist between the input and the output. Namely, the brain produces feelings from the input. Then several activations to the, the output. From these studies of Leonard, it is natural thinking that the process of human thought exists in the brain, namely it exists between the input and the output. This idea is almost ac accepted by the brain scientists nowadays. However, how can they be managed then? Then consciousness. Many brain scientists accepted that human consciousness could be functioned by neural nets in the brain and its, its human body nowadays. Of course, the main part of consciousness would exist in the neural nets of the brain from medical studies. But we, we don't know precisely yet about where or how of it. There are many discussions about this theme now. I try to make a model of a robot's consciousness. I understand that the main function of human consciousness was to study two approaches. One of them is language-based approach, and the other is body-based approach. The former example is the chat GPT. Now it is great. I am interested now about the latter one because the body-based one, like the self-awareness, feeling of the self, is also a very important side of human consciousness, I think. Oh, sorry. Doesn't work, video. And uh, I didn't research for around two decades on the self-aware robots because self-awareness is one of the best concerns for the body-based approach of the robot consciousness. At first, my research group and I developed a human head, which is movable like a human head. The material is aluminum, actuator was at first an air compressor, and uh, later servo motors. This robot was used in research about the creation of the self in a robot. Please refer number two. A special structure of a neural net is needed for self-awareness of robots because some uh, concatenation of conventional neural net couldn't have a clear explanation about that. My research group and I call the special structure Monado. This name is an homage to German professor Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. The Monado is a structure in which two recursive neural nets are connected with some neurons. This structure is called by some scientists the second order cybernetics. You see that the state of the first layer could be referenced by the second layer of the monado. And the state of the second layer uh, could be used for self-awareness principally. Namely, the state of the second layer could be used as state in the own body. Why, we need, why do we need self-awareness for robots? Of course, robot, robots are expected to be good partners for humankind. For that reason, robots must understand the good partnership for humans. Accordingly, robots should know their own state and the state of the, uh, the partner. For that goal, we need to study the self-awareness of robots.
I present notes in this experiment. The robot was not given any information about itself at the beginning of the experiment. Because these, there have been many reports that human beings cannot recognize themselves um, at infancy. Children can recognize themselves at the age of two. Sorry, video it doesn't work. Uh, I will present to you the implemented program. Three monads are connected in layers in the experiment. The imitation monad, uh, left up side, which uh, three reasons cognize and imitate the behavior of a robot seen in the mirror, in the mirror, which exists in front of its own self. The distance monad, left side, uh, which treats the body's own feelings. The settlement monad, right, right one, which associate conflict between a reason and feelings regulate behaviors of the lower level monads. The result is very physical. Movement of the robot RM, mirror robot, result in the quickest responses compared to the other robot, RO or RC. The robot RO is an independent robot. And the robot RC, downside RC, is controlled directly by the robot RS, by cables. Namely, the robot RC is a part of the robot RS. RM, mirror robot, mirror robot is not the other, nor a part of RS, RC. That's me. I believe that the implemented program gives a proof of existence that the robot has a function of self-awareness. Uh, okay, oh, it is on. This is another experiment related to aware robots. The robot RS robot was uh, pre-programmed to recognize three colors, red, blue, and green. When RS recognizes green color, RS moves forward. RS stops on red color and moves backward on blue color. When the robot encounters an unknown color, uh, the robot is capable of detecting it as an unknown color. And the robot records the color together with a specific behavior. The specific behavior, behavior is a pivot term. The system we developed detects unknown information by comparing the convergence rate on each monad in the system for, for each color. This means that an unknown color will have the worst rate on the convergence of monads. At that time, the unknown information and related specific behavior will be recorded on a newly created monad. Hmm? Okay. Uh, this is my proposed self-aware system. It should be constructed with three subsystems. One is reason subsystem, which is mainly connected sensors like visions, like visions, cognizes the outer environment far from its body. Uh, second one is emotion and feeling subsystem, which is almost connected to sensors on in the body. Le left hand. Left uh, and the, the last one is association subsystem, right one which controls between the former subsystems. It selects the best subsystem as the whole subsystem, self aware subsystem from the lower subsystem. If the reason system is selected, then it with association subsystem are uh, inter interpreted to be a state of explicit consciousness in the, se the self-aware system. 
at that time, the other subsystems are interpreted to be a state of unconsciousness in the self-aware system. You know that the association subsystem is, in this moment, could be interpreted as a tiny piece of the self. What is the meaning of emotion and feelings in robots? Happiness, sadness, disgust, anger, fear, and surprise are very famous terms used, used by Paul Ekman. And present and unpresent feelings are the other expressions like by Sigmund Freud. Pain is an especially important and basic concern by Rune Descartes. I would like to say here now, now that the feeling of robots are able to present from the monad structure. Please refer number two. Feelings. Feelings are still mysterious. My research group and I think that pain or unpleasantness originate from the inner several state of the system inconsistency or consistency in the system. Please refer uh, number three. Therefore, I can build a system in which a robot recognizes pain and it is aware of itself. My new book is just published. The title is Self-Aware Robots on the Path to Machine Consciousness. Okay. Uh, no doubt, the robot needs to know about itself and the other to build a good partnership for the human. Let's think about the simplest self our unit. An easy way to build a self aware unit is to have a neuron with a kind of a self loop. But a specific function of the self loop must be able to refer to its own state of the neuron. Therefore, I will now call this an aware loop. The right side, the right side is an implemented self aware unit monado we proposed. A self aware system is constructed with monads. This is a proposed self-aware system, which is composed of several self-aware subsystems. The reason subsystems act to understand the outer environment for the, for the robot. Left side and up. The emotion and the feeling subsystem act to understand the, the inner environment in the robot. Left, under. The association subsystem act to settle, middle, middle area, a conflict between reason and emotion and feeling subsystems. In my theory, the self, the self is pro produced as a representation automatically on a specialized case in the association subsystem. Please refer to my book. Two, the experience and the episodic subsystem as a kind of the neural database keeps all of the generated behaviors and its own result of the self-aware system. Right side. The self-aware system can grow on its own. Each development, each development of subsystem is described in my book, Self-Aware Robots. Please refer to my book. Many restrictions and free will. A self-aware system has received many restrictions in order to produce an output 
from the system. There are three strong restrictions on the system. The first one is a a priori state of the system, like emotion and feelings. The next one is external environment. And the third one is experience and, uh, uh, sorry, okay. Exter external environment. Uh, so the next one is external ex experiment. And the third one is experience and the episodic state. It looks that the system has no free will at all, but it is careful that the interpretation about free will is an object view from the third person like God. Please, you could take another view from a subjective interpretation of the system then the system is to keep a state of free will because the system can never stop the self-aware system of its own own. Namely, in this case, it could be said that the self-aware system has free will. Of course, if the system produces a new concept of God or vision of the object of thought in the reason subsystem, the system has to receive their restrictions. However, when in these cases, the self-aware process never stops. How to overcome them uh, and creation? And in spite of these restrictions, the self-aware system is capable of expanding itself further by its free will and creating new representations. It's my theory that the expanding and the creates of the system may make it possible to overcome against their restrictions. Namely, the self-aware system is able to make a resolution of the conflicts, conflicts between its free will and many restrictions in its own system, I think. I have no doubt that a self-aware system could be aware of its own existence and its own value, value. and the self-aware system could discover the, the existence of other entities beside itself. And from, from the start, the self-aware system would behave and treat another entity as a variable system just like itself. Such a behavior of treating another entity like itself might be the beginning of having a conscience. I call this primitive state of a conscience called the prim conscience. So the self-aware system would behave toward another entity in such a way that treat it as a variable system. This prim conscience of the self-aware system would be an evaluation of others, and that evaluation would mean that the self-aware system would consider the existence of others to be as a variable as, a, as its own existence. Namely, uh, the initial evaluation of another entity could change could change and gradually become a better or worse evaluation. Well, I would like to talk about human conscience. We still don't know exactly what the phenomenon of human conscience is, but my research group and I think that conscience is one of the most important decision processes used by humans when treating an unknown entity. Of course, when an unknown entity doesn't impact the self aware system in any way, the system should be maintain, maintaining its from conscious state. Next, I would like to speak about what this prim conscience is. My research group and I consider the prim conscience in, in simple terms to be a presentation AP of the state of absolute presentness in the reason subsystem. Absolute presentness means that each of the subsystems in the self-aware system is maintaining a state of presentness, 
And it must be noted that AP is not a self-aware unit, but a simple representation. Next, I would like to speak about what AP is. The key point is that when AP is activated, the system is not aware of the state of our serial presentness, but the emotion feeling subsystem will report a feeling of presentness in, in the robot's own body. Let's think about the robot when it is an what we call a mint state. For example, the robot is lying in a special curtain that is protecting it from any rough stimuli, and the robot has not yet learned anything except for a priori pre-learning. At that time, each subsystem of the self-aware system is maintaining a stable condition. This is a mint state of the robot. When the robot is in the mint state, the AP representation is activated. But when AP is activated, the self of the robot couldn't be self-aware because AP is not a self-aware unit. Nevertheless, the self the self is capable of receiving a report of presentness from the emotion and the feeling subsystem. That is, when AP of the uh, robot is activated, also the robot received the report presentness. The robot is not aware of the reason because the, re the robot couldn't be directly aware of the AP representation. Yet, if the robot embodies that it is in the mean state, then the AP AP representation can be activated. Thank you for the concern. Questions for the speaker? Oh, I have a question. Right. So we started discussion about that. Uh, uh, this is. Thank you very much for the speech. This is fascinating, absolutely. I can see a lot of reference to the dopamine system, for example. And uh, the one question that I have, that in the previous slide you have referenced your modules, let's so to say, yeah, one of them are, uh, are the layers, but those are feedback loops, definitely. Why do you call them layers? Yeah, those are feedback loops, yes. And they're absolutely referencing what we have in neurobiology. That's fascinating. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> it's a question? Yes, yes. About feedback loops and layers. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> About feedback loops and layers. One of the beginning of, of your presentation, you called them like left or reasoning and emotional feelings like layers, uh, first layer, and that was second layer, but that was mainly the feedback loops. Um. Well, this is about terminology. We can discuss it later if you like. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Other questions? Okay, thank you very much.